talking to Bev from North Chocolates. Um, and Bev, you're based where? I'm based in Newcastle, Newcastle upon Tyne. So okay. not very far from the lovely Berwick. Great. And how long have you been an artisan producer? Um, I set it up in 2013, um, Ruth, so it'll be mm-hmm. coming up to eight years now. Can, I, wow. can you believe it? Eight That's years. Amazing. Yeah. 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 Set it up in the eye of the recession. So my tagline is chocolate is good, recession is bad. And you know what? I've kept it just in case. <laughs> <laughs> And we probably could use it for the current situation as well. Absolutely. You know, <laughs> Not going away. Everybody, yeah, everyone needs chocolate at this difficult time. <laughs> <laughs> so Initially when... Go on. Go no, on. No, go, go ahead, Bev. All, all I was going to say is initially when COVID hit, everyone needed tin tomatoes and pasta. And then after about two weeks, it suddenly became chocolate and booze. So um, so it was. Uh, I was very thankful that I made chocolate rather than anything else. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. So tell us what started you on the adventure of making chocolate. Oh, right. Um, <clears throat> well, I've always been self-employed, um, Ruth. So I used to run a magazine. I've done all sorts. I used to be a journalist and... And I used to do a lot of lifestyle pieces. Um, and mm. basically the recession hit and a lot of my work dried up. I used yeah. to write for The Guardian, The Observer, and it was um, easier and cheaper for them to send their staff writers up to the northeast where I used to cover yeah. than pay me a freelance rate. So I thought, oh, God, I'm going to have to think of something. And I'd covered chocolate before, and I'd worked with a friend who had a very small chocolate company in Northumberland and um, helped her out. And I just thought there was a gap in the market. And instead of gallivanting around the country doing stories and up in, and when you're self-employed, Ruth, you never say no. So you're working seven days a week. Yeah. Um, I thought, I want to stay at home. It has to be low key. It has to be, um, you know, not much um, uh, cost, in the, not a huge amount of investment. Mm-hmm. But I saved up for a year and um, thought, what can I do? And chocolate seemed to be the obvious answer, but I wanted it to be very gifty. So I spent a lot of time looking at good quality chocolate, how to make it, did courses, spent a lot of time on the packaging because I used to run the magazine that I love design and went for it. And the rest, they say, is chocolate history. (laughs) And, you know, we can see from your your fabulous pictures, which you've sent, um, you know, obviously the design, as you say, is a very important aspect of what you're doing. Um, yeah. So, have you got a favourite product that you put well, out? You know what? I mean, I think my pro. I, I, tell, I love working with illustrators. I love work. I love illustration. And when I set this up, one of the first um, bars I did, I wanted to do the Angel of the North. Horribly opportunistic. Um, Ruth, in the Mm -hmm. sense that I knew it would sell because people who come to the Northeast, it's an iconic, Gormley's Angel is is an iconic statue and people want to take a little bit of the Northeast with them. Mm -hmm. And um, so basically I used to work with a a lady um, called Sarah Gibson, who's an illustrator, um, very well, very well known and she's, um, she's done, um, she's illustrated children's books and brilliant and I used to work with her at the magazine so I contacted Sarah and we ended up through trial and error oh, she did these beautiful images of, of the angel not suitable so we tried again and only because you can see it you know it had to work on a bar chocolate and then she um, she just produced this beautiful image I thought and which I use now and it's one of my best sellers but every time I see it it just it, you know I had great fun working with Sarah but also it's just a beautiful image and so I have to say the angel is probably one of my real favorites 
the newest bars that I've used are another lady, um, Suzanne Homer, are the Icon Ranges. Mm-hmm. And again, this was to celebrate the Great Exhibition of the North in 2018. Yeah. And so I wanted um, a set of bars to represent our the Northeast heritage and icons. So we eventually chose things like Lindisfarne, Durham Cathedral, um, the Rocket, Stevenson's Rocket, obviously the Tyne Bridge, and then Earl Grey as well. It, 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 and then, you know, we thought of um, flavours to go with them. Earl Grey was the easiest, obviously. Mm-hmm. And she did a beautiful set of illustrations. They are still, I think they're stunning. And ultimately, again, they go very, very well. But I think they, I have to say, the illustrations are, are my, one of my favourite, uh, all of my, out of all of them, are my favourite bars. Brilliant. And, you know, obviously all the flavours which you add into your chocolate. Um, yeah. You know, how do you, how do you develop your ideas for those, Bev? You know, how do you, how do you come up with your different combinations of flavours and? Um, I think there's always a bit of a zeitgeist, um, Ruth, in terms right. of, you know, if it, you, there's, I think there's always, um, there's new things come to market. And so what happens is that new things come. So you have a little try. Some things that don't work, some things that do. But also you, yuzu, for example, was a, is a real classic. Yuzu yeah. is a, a Japanese citrus. And I love the idea of it. Citrus goes well. You do a classic, you know, you've got classic orange bar, chocolate bars and I do a lemon and lemon sea salt bar, mm-hmm. um, which it, it go very well. So citrus is kind of in people's head. It's a, it's a taste that people enjoy. Yuzu, it's harder to work with in, in chocolate. But I did a, but what happens is you put yuzu and because it's Japanese, I added sesame seeds. I really loved it because I love the toasty seed, the toasted flavor of the seeds. Really, really like it, but people would say, "What's yuzu?" So you'd yeah. explain. But if you were not there to say it's actually a citrus, mm-hmm. so people would be like, "Oh, like give them a little try as a sample." Then it's difficult for people to get their heads around it. So when I first start doing it, and I sold it in Phoenix, it didn't go brilliantly, to be honest, Ruth. It was quite a slow seller. Mm-hmm. Um, then Master Chef started using it so which I didn't realize but loads of people would come and say oh they were using that on MasterChef last night is that what it is and I was like ah yes so you could see suddenly it started trickling into the more the you know mainstream people saw it on the telly um mm-hmm. people saw other chefs or or um using it so it suddenly had a, um, you know, it, it suddenly it became a little bit more mainstream, a little bit more um, less frightening. Because if you're paying five quid for a bar of chocolate, Ruth, you kind of sometimes go for what you know, you yeah. know. Or if you're buying it as a present, you tend to stay safe. And right. I understand that. But I think if, you know, I've got some customers who are really adventurous and who are always saying, oh, what have you got new? Or you should try this and you should try that. or um, And which is great. But then you've got other customers who basically say, have you got any mint, love? You know, and there's nothing wrong with a classic mint. Um, <laughs> really. yeah. But I think you've got to kind of strike that balance. You've got to have something new and you've got to have something exciting for your own benefit. Because you'd get very, very bored producing hundreds of bars of mint chocolate, wouldn't you? The same well, I time. would. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Exactly. So, yeah. yeah. So, tell us about your special products then, which you have coming up to the festive season, because I know you have lots of different bits and pieces in the pipeline, or are you actually on the shelves. I do. Um, I love Christmas, Ruth. It's one of my mm-hmm. favourites. But you know what? Usually my first Christmas order goes out at the end of July, beginning yeah. of August. Yeah. So when you were making Christmas festive flavours in the beautiful sunshine and everybody's sitting outside in their deck chairs <laughs> and I'm 
standing in the kitchen making clementine and almond Christmas cheer um, bars, then I don't feel very Christmassy or very cheerful, I have to say. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I think about it from the year before. That doesn't necessarily mean I'm organised and I know exactly what I'm doing. But I think, again, you, you're you reading magazines, you're looking at what's new out in the, in the you know, out there, and you, you're basically taking little ideas from lots of different sources, whether that's packaging. It might be a flavour for a cake that you can then transfer over to your um, bar, you know, and, mm-hmm. and adapt it. Um, but this year, um, I decided I was going to do Clementine and Almond. And um, again, a classic, but I love nuts. And I shied away from nuts because of allergies. Yeah. But I now realize that a lot of people really, really love nuts. And because I work in my own kitchen, I can never guarantee that they'll be nut free. You know, I, I don't, I, I have nuts in my sh- on my shelves, you know. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I think if people are really allergic to it, then they stay clear. If I've been to places where it's a totally nut-free environment or is a dairy-free environment, yeah. I can't say that by law. So ultimately, I decided to let rip and just use, I've, I've produced a lot with nuts and I really love nuts. And I found that a lot of people are really like, really, really love nuts as well, you know. So I'm really sorry for the people who can't eat them. So clementine and almond. So it's really, really, it's got that beautiful citrus smell when you open it up. And then you've got the texture and the crunch from the toasted. I toast all of the um, almonds. Mm -hmm. Then, um, and it's beautifully packaged with a little illustration on as well. And then um, this year I'm doing Three Kings. Now, this one I did it about three years ago. It was one of my best ever sellers. And I always introduce a, a one from the past, again, to save my sanity more than anything else, Ruth. But this one, it's, um, it's, a, it's a, a Christmas spice, I call it. But basically, I love speculus. You know, the, the Dutch yeah, spice mix, yeah, you get it yeah. in biscuits. So I make my own speculus and then um, I, so I use, you know, cloves and cinnamon and nutmeg and ginger, but I use it to my recipe because if you put too much cloves in, it makes the chocolate bitter. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I mean? So you've got to adapt it. And so the Mm. Three Kings is effectively a really lovely Christmas spice and it's gentle, it's nice and it's, it's great if you're sitting in front of a fire. From your description, I can nearly smell it right now. Oh. It, it, it sounds absolutely amazing. I can't wait to try it. When I make it, Ruth, it's it's effectively, it's people who obviously can't come in the house at the minute, but when I used to make it a few years ago and my mum used to come in and she just she said, you're making three kings, aren't you? And she mm-hmm. said, it just smells of Christmas. And yeah. it does when you yeah. when you make it, all the smells come out, and it just smells of Christmas. And that's in a beautiful gold wrapper, a gold ribbon, so it's really Christmassy. Yeah, can see it here. It looks really lovely. Um, <laughs> so how can how can people um, get all these beautiful chocolate bars from you, Bev? You do an online well, online ordering system. I do. I do do online ordering. But if you um, so you can go online. And you can you can order any amount of bars or whatever, and it's the same price delivery. So um, um, you can order from one bar up to thirty bars or, or whatever you fancy. But you can go online. There's dark bars which are predominantly vegan and dairy free. There's milk bars. There's the white a white bar and a ruby bar. There's Christmas hampers. When I say Christmas hampers, the more gift boxes because I've learned to my cost that I find Christmas shred in March of the following year. So I'm trying to keep them more simple. So I've got these beautiful um, small gift boxes rather than big, cumbersome, too much packaging. Um, I'm keeping it small, keeping the packaging down for this year. So you can buy all of them online. However, what you can also do, if you click on the stockists um, list, there's a regional and a Newcastle tab, 
and you can find a stockist potentially near you. Um, so I'm mainly in the northeast, Ruth, but um, by all means, if you're out and about um, after the restrictions or if you're out and about, have a have a look on the stockists. I sell a lot in independent delis, Fenix, farm shop. So you might see me um, and you can pick one up there. And then that's helping support the small shops and it's helping support me. So if you do want to order online, have a look at the stockers tab.